friends, welcome to today's video, which is a little behind the scenes look at Creativation 2020. Steve's driving, please look at the road while you're driving. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I've only half done my hair, so I'm really trying to get that part in the screen. <laughs> All right, we're on the road, we're heading to Phonics. It's probably gonna take about five, five hours, six hours, who knows. Um, we're really excited. Had a bit of a rough start to the morning. I had terrible nightmares last night. Did you have nightmares last night? Yeah, I woke up with a little bit of a night terror. Yeah. Steve had a little bit of a night terror, um, which led into this morning. Asthma was just flaring up. That was really fun. I tried to put something in the boot and Steve didn't realize I was there and shut the boot on my head. So we had concussions to deal with. <laughs> Apparently I'm not allowed to go to sleep. And um, yeah, and then we almost had a car accident like 10 minutes into our journey. So I've just been completely triggered today, but we're really excited nonetheless. I think all of the bad stuff is out of the way now. <laughs> We yes. can just have a good time and uh, and go to Phoenix, set everything up. Well, we don't have to set anything up. Um, it'll already be there, but we'll have to bring in all of the supplies. I said to myself I was only going to take like just a um, just my little Christmas pouch, my little travel little set, and then I put in an extra set of watercolors. And I thought, well, what if I want to do this? So I put in an extra paint pen, and then I thought, well, this black pen is different to this black pen. And so before you know it, I packed up my entire studio, and I'll be setting it up for like an hour long demo. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take more time to set up the the stuff than it is to actually do the demo. So um, it'll be great. That's it'll not great. out of character for me, honestly. No, he did that with his art supplies, and I did that with clothing. Yeah, Steve's got a lot of clothes for some reason. We're only staying until Sunday. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay till Monday because Steve's gonna be shooting a wedding on Monday, so we have to come back Sunday night. Although Steve's trying to sneak in a little trip to Big Bear, I don't know how that's gonna work out. But there's snow on the mountains. It's super gorgeous out. The sky today is a beautiful shade of cyan. Because it rained last night. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. It's <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> everyone on this, everyone watching this gets it. They get colors. <laughs> Blue. Cerulean. Cerulean. Was it Oscar de Laurenta that did a collection? Cerulean <laughs> um, Yeah. Anyway, so, oh, and P.S. I'm probably, I don't know how good I'm gonna be at vlogging this because I'm, I'm really preoccupied this trip, but um, we're not staying by the prison this time. We're not staying in that motel right next to that lady joint with the prison down the road, which I thought was a school. We're gonna stay at a, a really nice hotel like in downtown Phoenix. So we've just totally upgraded and I'm feeling really bad and bougie about it. Can't wait to bring you along. I'm Hopefully it's it. gonna be fun. I'm really here for it. Steve's here for it. You're all here for it. I'll see you again really soon. Okay, bye. Above the irony of everything I like the way you're thinking I don't really care about the music on the dance floor, I don't really mind all the smokers in the bathroom. I don't care at all, baby. You got my attention. We're here. So you were saying, oh, no. This is a lot nicer than the one we stayed at last year. <laughs> it's quite ritzy, Kale. Room to our bed. Bed. Huge TV. Welcome, James Burke. Thanks for staying. There's all our junk just there. Luckily we bought that rolly cart thing. Oh, I like that handle. There's Steve. <laughs> Is that from the Family Stone? <laughs> we had a good trip. It was not as long as I remember. I think it was um, five or six hours. And we only stopped a couple of times. It got pretty dark pretty quickly, so it's felt like it feels a lot later than it is. And I think the hour, I think it's an hour ahead here. Oh yeah, it's nine o'clock now. We should probably try and get dinner or something and then maybe get an early night. I don't know if I will. I'm too excited, I'm too hyped. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think? That's great. I've got a nice spot for creativation. I think we're gonna go and paint the town red. <laughs> Steve picked up a brochure of historical points of interest that we cannot miss. Yeah, restaurants and shopping. Your watch is talking to me. What is it saying? <laughs> I hate Steve's watch. I don't like getting um, I don't like getting notifications at the best of times, but this Apple watch goes off 24 seven. It does not. And Steve answers it like he's Kim Possible. Anytime anyone calls, he'll be like, hi, hello. And then he'll have to go and pick it up on his phone anyway because he can't hear what people are saying. Is... Or it's a private conversation that's now on speakerphone just out in the world. It's such a lie. Um, and just in case anyone's worried, I've got my puffer. <laughs> I'm really excited actually to see if 
if my breathing does clear up over this weekend, because then I will officially know that it's the cats that are slowly killing me. But we'll see. I already feel better. I think it is the cats. Steve thinks it's the cats. I think it's the cats. The doctor thinks it's the cats. Um, in which case, maybe I should get a Japanese face mask and just wear it at home, because that might help. I don't know. Anything's got to help at this point, because I don't want to become reliant. Anyway, thanks for coming on our tour. Hope you enjoy the hotel room. I really like it. We'll see you again really soon. Bye. We ended up in Italian. Shock horror. My favorite. <laughs> All right. We came back from Fry's, which is a massive department store, which I think is an electronic store everywhere else, but apparently it's a grocery store here. And um, we got some snacks. Our eyes were bigger than our stomachs, but Steve got this cheese. Cheese Whiz? It's like Cheese Whiz, but this says go cheese, but it's essentially Cheese Whiz. I've never tried this before. <laughs> so I used to eat this when I was a kid. I loved this. So you get a little Jazz whiz. cracker. Um, a Ritz cracker. Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. We're watching oh, Strictly oh, Ballroom oh. if you can hear it. Oh, yuck. That looks filth. Yuck. <laughs> I legitimately do not want to try that. I'm going to try one. No, just put a little bit on. You want like a sandwich? It's disgusting. You know, people like draw my day. Imagine I drew my day with like a cheese whiz biscuit. <laughs> Jump. Instagramable foods. <laughs> Yuck, that looks so gross. Good. Oh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Morticia Adams lighting. <laughs> this is the bedside light. I think that's a little dramatic. Good morning. It's day one for us. Um, Steve's just getting ready. I've just been on a Starbucks run, which ironically there's a Starbucks inside the hotel, but it was quicker for me to order it mobile and walk two blocks to go and get it than it was to wait in the line downstairs. Um, and you couldn't order mobile to the hotel one, so. I just went on a bit of a walk. It's actually not that cold outside, so I don't know if I need this hoodie, but I'll keep it on. Just so everyone knows what my messaging is. <laughs> and it matches all the tote bags that I'm giving out today, so. Um, we don't demo until 12.30, and it'll, it'll be for two hours, so. We're gonna leave everything here, I think. Go over there, kind of get our passes, just look through the show floor, vlog. Go Instagram live and then around lunchtime we'll probably have like a quick lunch and then come back here and get everything and then take it back. Which I already know, I overpacked, there's too much stuff. So maybe I'll have a moment of clarity by the time it rolls around at 12.30 and I won't take everything, but I'm pretty certain I'll take most of it. <laughs> I've still got my, um, I'm still got like a chesty cough, but all the, um, the wheezing and stuff that I feel like was you know, the asthma that we keep talking about, <laughs> that I keep telling you about. Um, yeah, it, I didn't wake up with that this morning, so pretty sure at this point it is the cats that I am allergic to and the cats are slowly killing me, which is very on brand for both of them. So I think we might get an air purifier or like a humidifier or I don't know. What do you think? Should I get, I think I should get a Japanese face mask as well and just try sleeping with that on and see if I don't wake up any better, but yeah. It's just not gonna work for me being that allergic to the cats. I mean, I've been allergic to cats my whole life, but they're literally my favorite thing on the planet. And if I can't be around them, that's just gonna be a problem for everyone involved. So we're gonna have to sort this out. So I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna hurry Steve up and we'll see you on the show floor, I guess. <laughs> How did you find that? In this whole show floor, you managed to find the one the lemon spread.
hotel room. It's about lunchtime, but I think we're probably gonna eat lunch afterwards. I've been stamping out a bunch of stamples. Stamples? <laughs> Stamp samples. Steve hates that. <laughs> stamples. Um, stamples, yes. We all know them as stamples. I think stample is actually possibly German for stamp. Or something? I don't know. I've searched the hashtag before. Like in real life? Yeah, in real life. I think it's a language. In some language it means stamp because I've seen it before. Um, anyway, um, but I call them stamples is for what I mean when I'm stampling out. <laughs> now I can't even say it. <laughs> anyway, I, just because we're only going to be there for two hours and realistically when you think about how much you can get done in two hours, I mean it's not that a long amount of time when you're thinking like, oh I'll you know, I'll start a piece and I'll finish a piece. Like, sometimes I would spend four hours just doing one thing, you know, with pencils and pens and depending on how distracted I got. Um, but I think we'll be able to manage getting a lot done. It, I guess it all depends on who wants to come and see a demo anyway. Um, but all of that to say, I stamped out a bunch of extra ones just to start with, just so I didn't feel like I was setting everything up and then starting with nothing. So there's at least something to start with, and um, as people come by, we can just either pick one up and see, you know, see what happens, or just stamp a whole fresh one out. But that makes me feel a lot better about that. We have about 40 minutes until we actually have to start, so I think we're just gonna chill out for a second. My little mini Diet Coke's froze in the fridge, so now they're slushies, um, but that's been good. <laughs> riveting information. <laughs> I saw Steve one minute and he was talking about products and the next minute he's gone <laughs> now I'm really worried he's like lost in the middle of the show floor not knowing that he can get off Instagram live whenever he needs to who's only supposed to be on it for like five minutes <laughs> he must have just taken himself somewhere I have a feeling I might know where he'll be update I found him he's literally wandering like the back of this hall. <laughs> I don't know how he got down here or where he's been I'm gonna have to rewatch the live and see what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna go tell him he can stop now. Poor thing. I only meant for like 10 minutes. <laughs> think I said anything about last night like I don't think I said how the day went I don't think I even like said that we were back at the hotel or anything I was kind of exhausted um, I didn't really do that much I was just exhausted anyway um, but we had a really really great day sorry I keep looking at the screen and I should probably look over here maybe I'll just look over here <laughs> it was really really great I I just it's so hard because I always like I get in these moments where I just remember once this is done, I'm going back to, you know, and I'm super grateful to have a space where I can work in and like have all my stuff, you know, and call it a studio, but it's just, it always, it's so lonely sometimes. Like I just, I love being around everyone else that loves to do it. Like all the same brand of crazy, everyone that just like, I don't know, already feeling sorry for myself, I guess. <laughs> But it was great anyway, um, and I'll just take the blessings where I can get it. So um, we're gonna go demo again this morning from from 8:30 to 9:30, and then I think we have an hour break, and then um, from 10:30 to 12:30, and then after that we're on the road because Steve has a wedding to shoot tomorrow. So um, yeah, we'll be driving back this afternoon. Hopefully, it won't take too long. Um, I'm gonna try and remember to get some footage of the on the show floor today, like demoing and just at least at the booth maybe even take a photo or two just so that we have something you know at least a photo that I can remember it by Steve took three yesterday but I swear my tongue was out for most of them so i um, not gonna use those but I want to just remember the experience and also um, yeah just at least have some kind of vlog footage to, put to show that I did go to the show and I was demoing because I know I've got all the footage of like finding all the sparkly things on the show floor but um, maybe I'll just try and get a demo or something. Steve thinks I'm crazy just talking to myself. So yeah, I'm just gonna go finish getting ready and um, make sure to remember to turn my camera on as soon as we get there.
All right, good day, friends. We are finished. We're finished. Woo! This is so gross. <laughs> I wanted to go real loud with it, but then I pulled myself in, and that's what you got. Um, we're finished. So we're on our way home. It's about noon. No, one. One o'clock. That's an hour late. Um, uh, time difference. But um, yeah. So we're going home. It should take like six hours, five or six hours, just to wrap up the show. Um, because I know you want me to do that in this bumpy car footage, but we had a really great time. It flew by. Honestly, the two hours felt like five minutes, especially yesterday. When we were demoing yesterday, I felt like it went by super quick. Um, today it went super quick too. Thank you to everyone that came up and said hello and chatted and stayed at the table and played. Um, I, I love to, I love to be in these spaces. I think I already whinged on a part of this vlog already about it, but it's just so nice to be in a place where everyone understands your brand of crazy. <laughs> you don't have to explain what washi tape is or why you use it so much. <laughs> <laughs> or why you're gonna remortgage your house to buy more of it. But um, yeah, it, it's really fun. I think Steve actually learned, learned more than he knew last year. You're a bit more in the know. Yeah, definitely. Still not a lot. <laughs> there were a couple words I was like... Still uh, enough to be really funny. Somebody would come up and be like, uh, what is this? Oh, this is, we're with our, our manufacturer. So I was learning lingo. You don't know the word manufacturer? I did, but I just don't always connect it. Yeah, well sometimes it's hard to know if someone's there buying for a shop or if they themselves are the designer of something and they're selling. Or, so if, they're I, just, or if they're just curious. Yeah, first of all I love that interaction and the awkwardness between like buyer and seller or if it's like seller and seller because then you're both selling to no one. <laughs> um, but I think everyone, like lots of people are there for different reasons and I'm open to everyone coming up. I'm open to people just coming up just to have a look at a demo because um, that's super fun too. I love to watch the demos. I think I watched two Dilutions demos in front of the desk and one creeping from behind a wall. Um, <laughs> uh, which is super serendipitous. If you don't know, I got my start in mixed media arts and crafts and art journaling watching CHA videos um, on Scrap Time Videos channel uh, with Christine. I used to watch those demos that all the Ranger designers would do back when it was called CHA in 2015. So I was watching ones from like 2012, 2014, like all the ones I could get. I watched everything and I went on eBay and I bought a lot of um, previously owned <laughs> Dilutions and Tim Holtz products, Distress products, from a lot on eBay. And I bought, it was, I think it was like $100 or something, but shipping to Australia was um, a really good deal. And so I, I started using those and that's when I got into art journaling and I was learning all about it. So it's, I've said this before, but it's really serendipitous to be in that same convention with these same people that were so gracious to have all those demos just be blasted across YouTube uh, for people like me to learn from. And that's why I've always kind of made it my mission to give back as much as I can because I, I would not know half the things I know if people weren't generous in sharing them with me in the first place. So just to even get that opportunity like Christine stopped by this morning, hey girl. <laughs> um, and we filmed a demo and even that just, it gets me super hyped and weirdly anxious because I think there's, there might be someone out there like me back in 2015 just recovering from a surgery or maybe their whole career has just changed, maybe their life has just been turned upside down and this could be the thing that's just keeping them occupied for right now. Maybe you're watching this video and that's you, I don't know. No, I'm really nervous. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that, that's just my general feelings about it. As far as opportunities go, um, there's some really weird ones that came out of the woodwork and I'm going to say Steve and I, were neither of us were prepared for what people were coming up and chatting to us about. Yeah. <laughs> I felt super, I felt super stupid, like I didn't know what they were saying and what they meant by it. But then we had a lot of other people coming up and saying, oh, this is that kind of opportunity, would you like to do this? Do you think you would do that? Um, so just as just as confusing as it was, so many people were so willing to be generous with their knowledge, their experience, and their wisdom having been through that process, which, um, yeah, I mean, peer, it's not just about networking, it's almost like that peer knowledge sharing, which is super valuable. And um, so thank you again to Photocentric for letting us come and demo. Uh, and thank you to everyone that shared with us and kind of helped us out with some stuff that we really didn't understand. <laughs> Um, I can't say we'll move forward with anything specifically. You know what I'm like. I think it's the um, non-committal. Non-committal. I married you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the kind of blessing and curse of being independent. You can make all the decisions. You can take yourself in the direction you want to go. Um, but then you're also liable for how it turns out. 
because you made that decision. So uh, I'm a very calculated risk taker and I'll say this much, I will read through every proposal that um, people have chatted to me about over the weekend, but as far as where we're going, I think we're good to, to keep going with that plan we had for 2020. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see. Maybe you'll see some stuff pop up in your local stores through wholesaling. We'll make an effort to wholesale this year. Um, that's something I personally want to do just because we are shifting into more of those collections. Yeah. So that base stamp, like this, the static kind of essentials line, I would like to wholesale just so it'd be easier for you to get your hands on if you're outside of the States. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And it was just super fun to see everybody, to see old friends, um, really old friends, <laughs> to see new friends. Uh, thank you to everyone again for that whole experience. I think I'm gonna kind of, maybe I'll put in a few more little clips as we leave, because we're just getting on the highway now. I'll put some nice little desert footage in for you. <laughs> um, and I might actually add on a little bit when I get home. I don't know if I'll be in the mood uh, for a full tutorial, but I do think I want to just play a bit more, because I have a lot of fun, and I, and there's some just things I want to do, and I might just put the camera on and do it. So, um, if this video is longer than this, I put it in. <laughs> if it's not, I didn't. Um, anyway, hope you had a great weekend. We had a great weekend. Yeah. And I guess we'll see you at the next creativation or wherever. This is a long time till then. Thanks, everybody. Bye. This is actually, um, you're kind of sitting at the window here. This is the table that I work at. This is everything that's kind of within reach, like just here. There's all those little shelves from Ikea. <laughs> I know I've never done a studio tour of this new place, but um, I don't think I'm gonna get around to it anytime soon. So I thought I would just try and set you up in this kind of a space while I chat um, because I'm gonna unpack. And I thought it would be good to show you what I took because I took too much. <laughs> Maybe it'll keep me accountable for next time. Um, but I'm gonna unpack everything and uh, just get to doing like a little bit of playing at the table. I don't know if I'm gonna specifically teach anything or just keep playing with the stamps and stuff. Um, obviously, a weekend like Creativation kind of, I mean, and I know it's still going right now, like literally today's Monday, um, so it's still it's still on. Um, but Steve's going to a wedding today, so I couldn't um, I couldn't stay until today. Uh, well, I could have, but I would have lost his help, and it honestly just worked out best if we just um, did all of our demoing on Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, we ended up coming home yesterday night. We got home pretty early. I think it was like 7, 7 or 8. Uh, had dinner, and then I just fell asleep. I always underestimate how exhausted I get when I'm um, having so many social interactions, and it's only because, like, that's never used to be a problem for me. <laughs> I could talk to anyone for any length of time, but... Um, ever since I've just become so, like, solitary in my work, where I'm just always at this table and I'm always just kind of quiet until I do a voiceover, uh, it becomes really, uh, becomes like a lot of work to just be around a lot of people all the time. And I don't have any social anxieties or anything, it's just, um, I don't know, I've lost my stamina to speak a lot and to be on and, like, be energetic for a long period of time. Um, also, we were standing at the booth, which is a good idea, and to be honest, I was thinking, like, maybe I should get a standing desk. This has been something I've been thinking about, because I don't think my setup right now is the most ergonomic, and since I'm always here, it's probably a bit of a problem. Um, but I was thinking about getting a standing desk. The only issue with that was that I was standing up for most of the demo, well, for, like, all the demos yesterday and on Saturday, um, and there were only periods of, like, two to three hours I was standing at most, um, but my foot was just, like, in absolute agony after that, and... I just, I mean, I've worked through a lot of that physical therapy with my foot. I think my ankle is kind of weak, so I might need to get a TheraBand or something. I know this is a super random chat. <laughs> I just felt like chatting. I probably should have gone Instagram live, but um, yeah, no, standing for that amount of time while working. It also, like, I, it was, I was bent over in a weird way because I think the height of the desk was, like, maybe just a little too high, but I needed to get close to it. I don't know. All those things I'm sure could have been sorted out with, you know, an ergonomic table. If I was going to buy a standing desk, I had no issues with the demo space. Um, it, it was 
perfectly what I needed. It actually, I think that was funny because it was so small, it made me realize just how much I brought that I didn't need. Um, so I'll show you it in a second, but <laughs> um, yeah, no, I thought I'll get a standing desk and after the weekend I think absolutely not, like I can't get a standing desk. If anything, I think I should get a lower desk to the floor um, and a more comfortable chair because at the moment I've got this bar stool kind of a chair that I don't know if you can see it. It goes, <laughs> this is my chair, <laughs> but it goes up and down. So I can kind of, you know, I can work the size out if I want to. Great. How does it go down? Do I need to be on it? There we go. <laughs> um, and then the table I have is a like an artist easel. An easel? Is that what it's called? An easel table? I don't know, I got it from World Market, but it, it rocks back and forward, like it goes on an angle. So you can tilt it, and I believe it's for like people drafting, a drafting table maybe. Um, which is fine, and I lock it into place so that it's flat, but you can't lower the height. I mean, you can't really do that with most tables, I guess, but because the bar stool and this is at the, the height that it's kind of fixed at, um, my feet are always off the ground, which I think may be a bit of a problem. There's a rest underneath the table so I can put my feet on it. Um, but yeah, I don't know if all that hang time is good for my foot. Anyway, these are things I'll figure out another day. <laughs> I don't know why I went on to that with you. One other thing I should tell you, I did come back home. We have absolutely 100% figured out that I have um, the allergic asthma to the cats. Uh, because all weekend I had no issues breathing, I didn't need my inhaler, nothing happened. Um, as soon as I got back home, my airway started tightening up. And now I have that um, really dry, raspy cough and um, a bit of breathing difficulties. So, pardon me for all of that. But at least now we definitely know. So I'm going to try and do some like air humidifier thing. Not a humidifier, like an air purifier. I'm going to try and put one in here. Try and get a little mask or something. I'm not getting rid of the cats. I mean, it's just the most dramatic. These cats are already the most, but now they're actually trying to kill me. So <laughs> that's new news for us. I mean, we kind of knew. And I know most, most of you didn't want to know and I have been whinging about it, but um, I think it's also good to know because I don't want to have to say every five seconds, like, sorry for my voice, sorry for my coughing, sorry for my everything. Like, we just know it's going to happen now. So I think we'll all live. All right, let's get this tub. Ooh, this is the big plastic bin from Target, I think. I have my planner and my five-year journal. Love. I need to get into that today, actually. This is what I've been looking for. <laughs> my phone charger. Um, iPad, didn't use it, but I thought, you know, sometimes you need to do a bit of, like, quick something if someone emails you something. But I didn't even take my iPad. Uh, I didn't take my Apple Pencil, so probably was a bad idea to take that all together. Um, this is a portable battery for iPhones and stuff, just because we were vlogging. I know you, this is part of the vlog. Probably wasn't the best vlog in the world, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> wasn't my main focus. <laughs> but I did want to take you along for as much as I could grab. Um, this is toiletries, I don't know why this is in that tub. Probably just didn't fit in my backpack. Paper roll, always good for a demo when you're gonna get some watercolor and ink out. This is my A3 Chic Sparrow. I needed this because I, was, I had a bunch of stuff on the table to look at. Oh, funny story actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you in a minute. But I had a bunch of stuff on the table. This didn't actually fit on there, but I had all my samples that I was playing with in there. So, um, all my samples kind of in here. And I would show people, like, this is more of the, the play phase where they're just kind of concepts. We're just stamping out ideas and some I'll finish and some I'll, you know, use again as inspiration. Like I might repaint this one. Um, I didn't, want to just show like finished finished samples because sometimes it's hard to get an idea of what it looks like in process or if you you know kind of abandon one like yeah so I just wanted to show this and also I got to show all this fashion illustration without stamping out the bodies 50,000 times because I did have a bunch pre-stamped Steve was like don't you want to stamp in front of people I was like no I, it's gonna take it's such a boring part of the process <laughs> even though it's all about stamping I just didn't want to um, I didn't want most of the demo to be about like, oh, this is how you build it. I wanted to show people like what the techniques were to do with it. Cause, um, I mean, you guys know the stamping and illustration. It was more about the, the tool, the stamp being the tool rather than the finished product. Um, this is two Caramello Koalas. <laughs> A little lovely Aussie fellow Aussie came up and gave to me. This is little flower pots of um, supplies. Oh no, my brush. I mean, it's fine. This brush is fine. It can be whatever it needs to be because the bristles were, I use this for a dry brush effect. Look at that. I stuffed it against the side of the bin. Um, all right, so this is black and white pens. I've accidentally got a few paint markers in there. 
when you're demoing, things go, they go where they go. And you sort it out later. <laughs> um, this, I put them in uh, little plastic bags because I didn't want to have to take everything out and repot it into my little planter pots. These are from Ikea. I think they're just literally planter pots. Um, I got colored pens in there because I love my colored pens. Oh, I had these too. These were my products. These are my photocentric products. So stamps and die cuts. Um, we just had these displayed as well, which was good because then we could show people what we were using as we were stepping them out. Um, I took my Marv liners. I didn't actually need those. I took a bunch of business cards, which was good. I always forget to carry them, so I'm sorry to anyone that I forgot to give one to. <laughs> I know Saturday afternoon, I did a lot of like receiving of business cards, but I didn't have any on me to give out. I'm just, I'm bad like that. Um, this is my little wannabe Duffy pencil case. The one that I got for Christmas with most of my Christmas goodies. This is like my current travel, take anywhere, um, wannabe art journaling the magic pencil case. So I'm obsessed with that actually. That's the one I think I use the most. And I also took my little pencil tins. Uh, because a lot of, like in a lot of the demoing, you don't really want to use too much wet medium. Wet media? I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I think it just gets a little tricky. If you're only demoing for an hour, then you're getting the heat tool out and you're trying to... It's a lot of messing about. I found that colored pencils kind of did the job the same way of just demonstrating something. Extension cord that I didn't need. It's always good to have. Little um, washcloth for my brushes. I had these two books and yes, I got in trouble. <laughs> I got in trouble with many, many people who asked if they could take this book or if I could sell this book. Actually, it was this. This is what I was laughing about. Um, Steve was setting up. I had brought these with me because this is the workshop that I do with the stamp set. So I thought it'd be interesting to say, because a lot of the store owners there um, will purchase products, not only to sell for their store, like not to just, you know, the wholesale and retail game, but to also use to teach classes. So I was saying, we did these workshops, um, and this was all about using the stamp set and how to build these illustrations or these final pieces out of it. But as we were setting everything up, Steve kind of put everything on the side table and I was getting ready uh, with stuff here. And he had, I actually took like over a hundred um, tote bags, the, these tote bags, and he was setting them all up. And a lady from Spellbinders came by because we were on the back of their booth. And she came over and said, um, oh, are these, are these catalogs? And Steve had said, yes. He told me all of this after I had no idea this was going on. And he was like, oh yeah, these are catalogs um, for some of his stamping, not realizing that they were the workshop thing. I mean, he knew that they weren't product catalogs, but he also didn't know to say like, oh, these are just to show. Um, and the poor lady had taken one to <laughs> keep for herself, I guess. I don't know. So now there's this poor lady who has a, um, who has a stamp book with zero stamps to use in it or any reason to have it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then we had to be really careful about what we displayed and how we displayed it just in case people thought it was, um, to take. Um, and these two people thought these were product catalogs. So I did have three. Um, I ended up giving one of them away. That was just my own personal choice. And I, and I have to say sorry to anyone else who did ask for one. And I said I wasn't going to give them away. Um, in the back of my mind, I thought if there was one opportunity where I thought I should have given it away, I would give one away. Um, the other one is for me, and the other one is for me. Um, <laughs> but I have decided I will I will reformat a bit of them. I think I'm going to clean them up a bit, um, and I'll wait on it a hot minute, and then I'll put it up on Amazon. So I'll actually try and make it international so that anywhere there is an Amazon, you can purchase it straight from there, and it's their direct publishing. So they, when you place the order, They'll print it, they'll put it together, and they'll ship it straight to you. So it really won't have anything to do with me. I'll collect a royalty for it, but um, it'll all be through Amazon. So you really won't have to worry. It won't be like buying it from my Etsy store and paying, you know, all that shipping. Um, if you've even got Amazon Prime in your country, I think it'll come ship for free. Maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Um, but... Yeah, so hopefully that'll be the most economical way to do it. I do just want to make sure that it's, um, it's all nice and done well. Because there are a few things that I obviously just threw together because it was the show. Um, but I don't think I'll take anything out, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Maybe I might take out this daisy section. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe I might add the first Inktober. I really don't know. Because there are whole parts in here like the blogs from... Um, the blogs from Playtest Patreon. Like, I wanted to put this in here because it's, it's the blog that I wrote about my gran. Uh, from the 2018 Patreon experience and not only is this super sentimental But I feel like it was a great way to show that the stuff that I've been working on hasn't just been 
um, you know, something I started a couple of years ago, or, and it hasn't only just been, you know, arts and crafts, it's been stuff that I've been doing with my grand, like, dressing up in costumes since I was a little boy, and, um, you know, who plays a big part in some of this stuff, so, I don't know. But I have decided I would do it, much like the, much like this was the demo from last year that everyone said, can we buy that? Um, I'm gonna do the same thing for the book, so just bear with me on that. Of course, I will let you know when it's available. Much like all of these, I know I've been getting so many questions about, is this being restocked? When is this being restocked? When can I get this? Where can I get this? I feel like I try to do my best to spread the information all across um, different channels and avenues, but I'm probably failing in a bunch of places because <laughs> I get the same questions. Everything here is um, is going through like a bit of a rebranding. So, and I've been telling everyone at the show this as well. So if you're watching, hey, um, but this is just in case you missed it on the 2020 video because it's kind of long. Um, I guess this one might be long too. Um, there are going to be stamp sets that will disappear. So, Blokes is going to go, Charmed I'm sure, that'll disappear. Um, and then there'll be stamp sets that'll stay around but might be reformatted a little bit. Uh, like this one, uh, she is probably going to go, which will be replaced with something else. Um, so the face base will stay but it'll look probably a little bit different. I'm going to change the proportions on this face as well. Um, also, uh, I'll be trying to bring out a new set of this with a different facial structure. Um, and I know I get asked all the time, like, oh, can you do men of that? Or can you do a fuller figure of that? Or can you do a different version of that? My answer is always yes, I can do it, but will I do it? Probably not, unless that is where I get taken to. Um, because even though I am trying something different this year with the themed collections of products, um, which is more of a challenge for myself, honestly, to see if I can design to a theme and a specification, um, just to see what that process is like, to be honest. Uh, I think when it comes to this base kind of like essential set, these products were always just an extension of what I was already doing. So if I was having fun with this, a certain style or aesthetic of, of you know, using brush strokes and doing fashion heads, um, that's how, you know, the unbothered one came out. And this, came out as I was having an obsession with ball-jointed ball dolls. Um, so I, I never want to say that, like, yes, I'll just make every single version of everything available because it's probably not going to happen unless I get driven to go there. And it's purely for the fact that if I'm not going to play with it and enjoy it, I really don't think anyone else wants to see that. <laughs> I could design the products, I could put them out there, and like I said, I'll never say never, but, um, you know, these come through to me first, and I have to make all the samples and make all the videos, and um, there's a lot that goes into designing it and playing with it and showing it to people. By the time you actually get to selling it, um, you could be really over it if you didn't really like it from the beginning. So, it was the reason why, um, even though I loved my little summer dolls, the little uh, corner pieces, little barbies that kind of sit on your lines and stuff. Um, I really love these, but I'm not going to bring these these back again. Um, they were just for that period, I really liked it. Um, also kind of goes into where I think about collections, like the, um, the little faces, little She's Three Faced set. To me, that was just, that was of that period. I do like the face, I might use the face again in a different set, like I could take some of the features of this face and simplify it and put it in this set, since it's the one I use the most. Things like that I'll make, you know, a conscious decision of. That makes sense? <laughs> Probably not. Um, things like that I'll, I'll try and figure out, but, um, you know, if, if it's just, if it's not what I want around anymore, I'm just not gonna do it. Purely for the fact that I'm the one that has to, to love it the most, um, to be able to get that to translate to you all. Um, and even though some people really do love it, if I, I always feel like if I can, if I make every single thing someone asks me to make, um, sometimes it also feels like I don't trust my own instincts, and it feels like I don't believe in myself enough. And I know that's a really weird way to go with it, <laughs> um, but a lot of this is very scary to put out there. Like, I was having a chat with someone yesterday who had just done her first um, set of stamps, and I was talking about how with the creator box, um, because I felt so scared in that process and like it was so risky and I just didn't know how everyone was going to take it uh, when I was first launching these stamps and washi tapes, the creator box kind of was born out of that idea of like, can we take some of the risk away? Can we at least, you know, lessen the burden of that process a little bit just so um, people can experience how good it can be when you do put it out there and you do really love it and you do really want to play with it and use it and you want others to enjoy it the way that you enjoy it. Um, and that's just it. I, I want you to have the fun that I'm having. So if I'm not going to have fun doing a male doll parts, I wouldn't do it. And since I don't typically draw men, um, especially not fashion figure kind of men, or like that stylized kind of a like ball jointed doll male, um, 
I don't know, maybe I would have fun doing it, but I just haven't done that yet. So uh, if I go there and I like it, it would probably become a product. I don't know now because we're doing collections, but <laughs> um, I know that was a kind of roundabout way to say what I guess I wanted to say, and that's um, I really do trust that I'll make the products that I would love to use the most, and I think that's really important when selling products. I don't want to be, I don't want to put something out there that I don't really enjoy using, and that I'm going to have to force myself to enjoy using, even though I could. Does that make sense? Because I have the option. Being independent, you have the option. You can say, it's Easter, but I'm putting out a Halloween collection. Or I'm putting a Halloween Easter collection out. Like, that's what an independent can do. Um, if I was working for a company, then yes, you would probably get all the things you're asking for, because technically that would be what was most marketable. But, um, you know, my products have never been in the interest of making a billion dollars. It's just been a way for me to share the excitement and the joy that I have doing what I like to do in that moment, um, and to give that over to you so that you could share in it the same way and enjoy, enjoy it the same way. So I'll do that. What am I doing? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I said I'll do that. But I'm, I was looking at this and I was like, I'll do this. <laughs> this is something that you asked for. And since I have put some work into it and I do really actually like it, I'll, um, I'll make that happen for you. But as we move throughout the year, th these will all be rebranded. There'll be a staples kind of like a basic set that will kind of just be for sale throughout the year. Um, and they will be the ones that I'm willing to wholesale to stores. So if you do see them pop up in stores um, near you or, with, or in your country somewhere, they will probably be from that base collection where it's like, you know, a lot of this stamping and illustration, like build or set kind of a stuff. Um, but if they're the collections, they'll stay independent with me for their first launch anyway. But I don't see myself doing anything after that. <laughs> I'm gonna take it a step at a time. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this is the last thing I had in my box. It was a plastic tub. Let's get rid of this. Move some of this junk out of the way. I've made a massive pile of stuff now that I'm just not gonna be good for putting this here. I should have put it away as I was getting it out. All right, we've got my Daiso ink, the Sumi ink. A, a lot of this stuff is listed on, um, Amazon storefronts as well. So check the description below. Uh, the link to Amazon will take you to where you can buy a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you. No, that's a lie. <laughs> Not a lot of the stuff I'm showing you. A lot of the art supplies that have popped up in front of your face, um, you might be able to find some of them there. This is a um, heat tool, just to make sure everything gets dry. I've got a stamp cleaner here. I've got my eraser and my sharpener. I've got a bunch of little inks. I didn't need to bring hardly any of these. I didn't use any of these Versafine inks, I don't think. I had black, toffee, smoky gray, and red. Um, I also had the little distress inks. I didn't use the little distress inks either. I didn't use the Versamark chalk, <laughs> little dewdrop inks. I didn't use those. I, um, I did use the distress ink, the large ones, except for sponge sugar. I didn't use that. Um, antique linen, that's usually the one that I'll use. I mean, I'll second generation stamp that. Uh, but for demos, I, I don't really because I need people to see what I'm doing. But um, tea dye or Victorian velvet, I'll use these if I really want people to see where everything's stamping out. Um, it, it doesn't make for the most crisp impression, but it doesn't really matter for me because I'm going to be drawing over the top of it anyway. So as long as the impression is there, um, it's usually going to get covered with watercolor and pencil and pen and paint, whatever I can do with it. I took my watercolor palette. I didn't think I would use this, but I actually did. Really enjoyed that, because one of the techniques I love to show is um, very heavily based on watercolour and a pencil. So this was actually great to take. And I had a lot of people asking about these uh, watercolours as well. They wanted to know where this set came from. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, we are journals, we just put them together. Um, but especially this uh, Hydra colour, the Empress one, and Designs by Rachel Beth, the Manhattan. I think on that convention floor a lot of us just get um, sidetracked by something sparkly. So <laughs> I had a lot of questions about that. Um, I got this little ceramic tray from the Daiso. I don't know if it's really ceramic. It says Japanese ceramics. Um, I got this from the Daiso and I use this for my ink. I've been using this for a long time, but I never cleaned it out either. Some, cause the, it will reactivate a little bit in here. Um, it does get a little like, um, what do I want to say, gritty. So sometimes I will kind of wash it out a touch. Um, but typically, like, if there's a little bit of a spot here, like, I'll put my ink in there and I'll just do my dry brush technique from there. Uh, but if I want to do, you know, grey scale, like, if I, want, I might put the lightest grey in here. I'll put, like, a lot of water in there, a bit of water in there, and this will just be straight up black ink. So I like that they're separated like that. 
I took these. I took my Escoda travel brushes, but I didn't use them. I still feel like they're way too precious to you. Because <laughs> I need to stop. I, I wanted to have them because I wanted to feel bad and bougie, but I just couldn't bring myself to use them. Um, I got a little playtest box here. I use these boxes for everything. Like, for all of this here. See these? The, I just cut the lids off, and these become my little trays. So I've got washi tape trays over here. I've got trays of products. Um, and then I just stack them. I've got a whole tray of paint pens. Even little trays of um, bits and pieces that have come in Happy Mail that I need to sort out or use. Wow, that was a flattering angle. <laughs> but um, I use these to transport things, carry things. Wow, everything's stuck. This is... These are all my stamps. These are what I was demoing with. I took a bunch of blocks, and like you saw in the demo from last week, I had the, the stamps on the blocks ready to go. Um, and then there's still a few from one of my last demos. I had the leaves on. Um, which is really great. I like actually having them all together because um, sometimes I'll only take, bring out one stamp set and I, I really like to mix and match the heads. I like to mix and match all the decor pieces, um, which is also where my head's at because I was supposed to take a break today. Today was supposed to be my day off, but I thought I've got to take all this stuff out. I really want to have a bit of a play, so I don't mind putting the camera on for it. Basically, it's not going to be my day off. I am going to work today. That's what I decided, but um, I need to kind of get a move on with all the rebranding of this product so that I can at least make orders because um, I feel like after the show you have a window of opportunity to make things happen um, and let's be real like as many opportunities as we were presented with over the weekend I could take none of them and still be completely happy to move forward um, with my own vision for where we're gonna go this year with my own plan for what we're gonna do still distributing independently and just shipping them out of my house like I don't I don't have much of a problem with that because the reality is like I don't need or have never oh I'll show you the last thing because this is the last thing we have I had a little paper pad I would second generation stamp like I'd use that for ghost stamping or even like a bit of masking if I needed a piece of paper um, and then I had some sample pieces I had some samples that I had out on the table or I had bits that were ready to be worked on that I would just demo little bits and pieces on, but these are my samples. Love these. These are all little watercolors and mixed media. She got washi tape on her. And then we had samples that we actually did on the day. Um, and I, I never get all the way through them. Uh, some I will finish, um, but I think I gave some of those away because I don't really get personally attached to anything. So <laughs> I have no problem giving it away. <laughs> um, this, we were demonstrating how these little eyes here um, how the stamps became this because I think a lot of people were really confused that this was also the same stamp as this um, so I was demoing how like even this little face was the leaf the hip joint and the knee joint uh, which maybe I'll show you that today I think I'll show you that today <laughs> I'll do that demo for you um, we got more just ready ready to stamp out pieces see that's what I was showing people that's how it became that um, little watercolor demos, just picking out and highlighting accents. I even got people to grab the brush and have a go as well. Because <laughs> they were saying they couldn't do it, and I was like, you can do it, grab the brush! Um, which was great, I love that people got involved. This was ready to go, didn't do anything with it. Um, and this was ready to go, didn't do anything with it. And then we were working on just some fashion figures as well. This is why I took the ink and that, that brush that's now fully ruined. I don't know if this will work anymore, but <laughs> I'm curious to see what it does now that it looks like this. Maybe it'll be a cute new little right angle fan brush that serves one very specific um, but unnecessary purpose. Uh, anyway, so let's get rid of all this junk. What was I going to tell you? Oh, okay, opportunities. So it's a really great um, place to go because there's people from all across the industry there and you don't know what they're there for. Some are there to buy for their own stores, some are there to um, you know, take back to another country to distribute in Europe, some are there to take your stuff and put it onto TV shopping channels. So people are there to do like lots of different crazy things. Um, being independent this whole time, I have always just kind of fly by the seat of my pants mentality where I would just learn as I go. And that's really scary in a place like that because I was like, am I doing the right thing? Do I even know? Like, do I even know what I want to be doing? Do I want that opportunity? And to be honest, I really don't know at this point, I, if I can say that much. I hope people that are watching don't think that, that it's bad, but I have to be honest, I don't know if, you know, even if something sounds a little glamorous, I still don't know if it's the best thing to do because you can, everything comes with good and bad, right? There's pros and cons in everything. Um, my pro 
my biggest pro out of all of the opportunities without giving anything away and making anyone happy and too excited about anything um, there seems to be an opportunity to take some products and um, put them into stores in other countries which would be great um, because then I wouldn't have to worry about uh, a lot of people not being able to afford shipping which I do realize is always a problem always a factor um, trust me I understand I really don't like it myself but there's nothing I can do about it so distributing internationally might be a good opportunity to to help alleviate that problem that I have um, the only other problem is is that sometimes mathematically it doesn't work out because you also have to understand that um, I'm not a company like I don't I mean I have a business but I'm not a company I don't have anyone working for me I don't have anyone helping like manage my brand I don't have anyone helping even like shipping stuff is, is still my hands working on that and so time becomes a huge factor but also money becomes a huge factor um, because it all costs a lot of money and if I'm presenting a line like a range of products that's big enough for people to want to buy um, I'll have invested thousands and thousands of dollars into that um, on the off chance that they may not sell um, from my end but also if I do distribute those internationally I don't sell those at the same rate that you get to um, that you sell them retail right so there's a wholesale price and there's a retail price I think people know about this but um, basically all of these opportunities they come you know you're making not as much money if a lot at all on what you're selling it's more about the opportunity to get your products in more people's hands which I would love to do I just can't do it in a way that would bankrupt me so some opportunities even though they seem really glamorous also do come with the risk of actually undercutting yourself to the point where you can't continue to go making products anymore um, so maybe I will have got a bunch of products out into you know let's just say Europe but I would have no money left to make products at all anymore <laughs> not only for the US but I wouldn't be able to make continue making them for Europe either if um, if you know if my business relied on that that rotating income that comes from um, from selling products which uh, is kind of why and this is all boring business talk but that's why online courses became a much more um, efficient way to generate revenue to put back into the business uh, and that's why I had made that switch last year to really focus on that rather than focus on bringing out a ton of new products and also those experiential type things like playtest patreon or actually doing workshops in person at stores um, that's why I was trying to go more towards that just so I could lift the burden of having product be the main source of income for my business um, just because there's a lot of work that goes into it and sometimes you just don't have the time sometimes like I, today I really want to get all this rebranding done but this is not going to be a one-day thing and I also have to get my travel journal course done that's not going to be a one-day thing even like doing YouTube videos is not a one-day thing like this one's been going for three or four days now so it's everything takes time I think you have to always be really really conscious of um, saying yes to things because if you say yes in one place you may have to end up saying no in another and even though I'm not trying to be greedy for any opportunities or trying to make this something that it you know something crazy like it, it really isn't I wish I could just tell you what it was but um, you know I, you always have to kind of keep that stuff secret just so people don't get excited <laughs> um, my I think my point that I wanted to share with you is that I'm very grateful for all those opportunities I'm very grateful for all of the people that came up and um, you know put themselves out there to say those uh, to say lovely things or to um, encourage in specific ways and I really do appreciate all of the information I also just want to say that um, it was a blessing just to be there and just to be able to share with people what I love to do and how I love to do it um, in the hopes that even if they never come across my work again that they might have this idea that the next time they go home and play they can do that with their stamps or they can teach that to their classes at their stores um, that would just make me happy as well so I, I and it's one of those because that's where imposter syndrome comes in it comes in and it tells you like you have to be there for a very specific reason if you come away from creativation and you haven't sold to 65 stores and you haven't made international connections and no one cares about you then it was a failure like my metric for success in creativation is just to get there and to demo <laughs> so I feel very successful just turning up um, because it's a great, it's a crazy serendipitous thing that those CHA conventions that I used to watch on YouTube, like that's 
I'm now there. I'm now there and I'm showing people what I love to do. So um, that in itself is a massive success. And um, I try to keep myself in balance by just reminding myself that if none of that, if I don't say yes to any of those opportunities, as glamorous as they may have seemed at first or as um, impressive as they might be or as good as they might be, maybe I just might be scared and I don't want to do it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't typically not do things because I'm scared, but <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know, I could have that moment. I, I just want to make sure that uh, you guys know that I'm also very happy to have been there, to have done what I did and to, um, and to still have faith in the plan that I had set out earlier this year. Um, like I said, I'll be flexible. I will truly be flexible with everything because I have to be, but if God wants to walk me on a, on a different path, like I'll go there. I'll, if that door opens, I'll look in there. We'll have a chat. I may walk back out the door, <laughs> but nine times out of 10, I will just keep moving forward in that direction because um, it's led me to here, right? So it couldn't, I don't think it's really supposed to lead me to a bad place, but I just want to make sure that I'm sharing all of that with you because I do say I have all these intentions to do these things and you know one weekend can really change everything it can make you think like well what if I just ditched this and then went on more of this angle or what if I did that but I always have to ask why like why would I be doing that um, and truly my 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 why at this point the one that really keeps flashing up is like well I would love for people not have to pay exorbitant shipping prices. <laughs> um, the reality is that's kind of the only reason why. Like, I don't want people to have to miss out because they can't afford the shipping prices. Um, which, even though it might seem like a good why, um, if the trade-off is that financially the business will struggle, therefore I will struggle personally, um, unfortunately that might have to be an opportunity that waits for another day. Uh, which... You know, that's why I never say never, because it could happen one day. Maybe one day I link up with someone who it ha and it works out. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll look into. I'm going to read every email I get. <laughs> I'll read it top to bottom, inside out. I'll ask questions. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to people who know better than I do. And I will just ask, ask, ask. Um, and if I can make anything happen that would uh, impact you all positively and not uh, make me suffer, I will do it. <laughs> I'll suffer a little bit. Just a little bit for you. Anyway, um, that was everything. That was all the paper, everything that I took to Creativation. I know this was like a really random chat. I'm going to turn you up onto the bird's eye view and we're just going to play one more thing. Please, please don't come for me for the fact that I've been looking here the whole time. <laughs> I know that the camera is there. It's so unnatural when you can see yourself like right there. It's so unnatural just to look into this like little peephole like in your phone so I, I don't know do you like that I'm looking here <laughs> does it feel more personal I feel attacked um, no I, I know people I like, get really mad when I don't look at this the camera when I look at the viewfinder I think that sometimes I get it right sometimes I get it wrong <laughs> I believe most people are here to watch my hands do something not my face so hopefully um, hopefully I'll make up for it in a second um, anyway I'll see you after the jump cut bye bye <laughs> Alrighty, who's still with me? Who survived this whole video so far? <laughs> Leave a little star emoji if you have, because you've been a star. Um, it's fine. I, look, I know this vlog has been crazy. I know the chat was really long. I've got a lot of feelings I need to share with you guys. And uh, I thought I'd ended up with a nice little uh, tutorial, just in case you felt like you wanted to play after all of that. Um, so these are some of the samples that we went through at the booth, some that people helped me with, some that I did beforehand, some that we did on the day. I think you can tell the difference. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a problem with this one. I think I could finish her up quite nicely. I really like how her eyes came out. Um, but yeah, just demoing techniques. I really like that these stamps are tools. They're creative tools, and I think you can use them in a way that really exercises your creativity. Not only with that, how their puzzle play and how it's like building blocks, like with the Lego and you're piecing bits together and they're all concepts. Um, you can play with different styles. You know, how often do you think like, oh, that might be a style I like to try, but you get stuck at the drawing part. Uh, look, I'm speaking literally like I speak at my demos now. You guys know what I'm about. I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole speech. Usually I just start playing and then, then I'll start talking because when I'm doing it, it's easier for me to tell you exactly why I love what I'm doing. Oh, I've got all my pieces of paper here, but I haven't got any of my stamps. I'll get them. 
All right, so this was just a bunch of demos. These pieces here, these are the ones they took to the show. These were all done with exactly the same stamp set. So, um, and really um, ranging from 2017 to 2019 because this face is a part of the face base set. This one right here. I do not know if these are still available on Etsy or not, but they should be back on Etsy when I uh, have done the rebranding. Although I do think I will be changing the, um, the proportions or the positioning of those eyes at least because I realized that when I did this um, I did the eyes in a place where I thought they would work the best uh, but then I realized every time I would demo with it especially more recently I've changed my preference for where I like the eyes on my face so I've moved them down a lot so I might move those eyes down purely for me <laughs> sorry if you liked them up there hopefully you've got that stamp um, and then I'm using the doll parts which uh, for this I really didn't need a lot of the uh, the legs or anything, or did I? I don't think I did. I think I stopped at about the hips, yeah. So I'm gonna use the doll parts. This is the four by six set, not the two by six set. Um, that's a really, really small one. You could do it, it would just be a really small body. Uh, but you can see that this, we've, we've really taken liberties with this one. So let's just, let's just demo it. This is the little demo that I would show people. Got my little tea dye. Tim Holtz Distress Ink here. I'm gonna stamp out my face real quick. Also, you do not need to use the stamp set that I'm using here. If you can find an alternative, find an alternative. We're just looking at the idea of it. We're not really, um, you don't need to use exactly the same ones. Uh, I, do, I just don't want you to ever think that you have to go out and buy something to play along. I know what it was like when I first started, or even after I first started. Like, so I, It's not like you can afford every single item everyone on YouTube's ever used. So um, I would oftentimes find alternatives for things, like maybe I really loved a certain brand's uh, color of paint, but I just couldn't afford it. So I would find an alternative for that. Uh, that maybe I could get cheaper. Even now, I still use all the Target um, acrylic paints. Even though I have other ones out there that I love, sometimes I just can't justify the price, or sometimes, uh, even though I can justify the price, the cheaper ones just work just as well, so I don't know. Um, I, I just want you to feel like you're free to play. Don't feel like I'm gonna get angry at you because you didn't use these stamps. In fact, I would love to see what you do, um, not using the stamps, but still using the idea. Anyway, so I've got the hip joint from that uh, 4x6 doll parts. Stamp set, did I say this already? We're using the face base face and the four by six doll parts. I've got the hip joint and I'm gonna take, see this eye here? I'm gonna use the bottom of that um, semicircle and I'm just gonna stamp out the hip joint underneath that. So that actually became my two eyes. And now, this is why I had that leaf on here. This leaf is from the concept stamp set. <laughs> So I mean, there's really a bunch of stamp sets here, but you'll be able to see the shapes. You could even draw this. It's not that hard. It's just a circle and a leaf. Um, this is the circle. I'm going to use where that eye is just to place the leaves on top. And they became the little leaf eyebrows. And believe it or not, the knee joint, that little oval, if you stamp that out, just covering that eye a touch, that becomes the cheek. And that is how we made a little eye eye, cheek, and eyebrow combo. When we go to draw it in, I'm going to draw the eyebrow first. Well, you could do either one first. I just, I would want to do the eye last because I actually want these two elements to cross the eyeball. And I do like to put those little detail lines back in. I don't have to draw them in the way they were stamped because see, if you've stamped over things tons of times, it just gets a little like confusing. Let's just, you know, let's just say we know what a leaf is. <laughs> and we'll just go over the top. We'll, we'll start again. It's like nothing ever happened under there. We'll never see the stamp again. And then I'll outline my cheek. I actually use the little nose here for the smiley face. So I'm just going to, well not the face, but the, the mouth, the little smiley mouth. I'm just gonna outline that. And then I actually put two irises in this. Oh, not irises, well, I mean the irises in there, I guess, but um, two pupils. I put a big one and then I put a little small one. I don't know why I did that. This was happening in some like free play I had last week or the week before. And I've been really obsessed with it. Then I'm gonna outline just the parts that I can see that don't cover that cheek or that eyebrow. Yeah, I don't know. All these little characters just started popping up in my drawings with this little double, double pupil, leaf brow, this little combo. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it happened, but I just really got taken with it. So that's how this sample came up. Cause I thought, oh, it's cute. Let's see if I can do it with the stamps. Um, and I did, I did it with the stamps. Cause at first I had stamped out, um, I used the hip joint to make these eyes because I just wanted different eyes. I used it for this one as well. 
I think this was the first one I used it for. Did I? No, I didn't. I drew that. But there was a fun trick to that one as well. Anyway, we're looking at this one. Uh, if you really want to know how to finish this, let's grab... Because, I mean, this is kind of what I wanted to show you. I'm going to grab the, the body. I'm going to stamp it on an angle off to the left. And then I'm going to grab the hips. I'm going to stamp those off on an angle towards the left as well. Now, you can see there's an oval in the background. I have an oval stencil here, and I like to use this if I don't want to complete the, the image. And I do recommend people do this if you find that stamping out a whole scene or a whole illustration is a bit much. We've looked at this before. If you go right back to 2017 in the JLB Creative Stamp series, this is one of those techniques to ground your illustrations into the page if you feel like they're just floating somewhere. We're kind of giving them this framing device. So anything I'm going to worry about is the parts that, you know, are in this circle and this oval, I guess I should say, or the frame, and whatever parts of the character pop out. So all this background we can just leave. Now I will stamp out just a few of the other parts of the body, but you can see these are really different looking bodies, and I'll just show you. I took liberties with how I penciled it in, with how I outlined it. So I'm gonna put this arm just coming down here, and I'll put this arm coming down here. I might even put the knee joint at the end of the arm, because they're little characters holding a banner. Uh, and then I've got the two leaves. Oh, that's lucky that I had this stamp ready to go. I've got the two leaves I came up to about this leaf eyebrow area, and I stamped those up the top. Now, when I went to go and outline everything, and uh, it'll be good because you can see, a lot of this was stamped so lightly, you can't actually see the working lines anymore. Oh, sorry, there's cat hair all over it. Um, you can't see a lot of the stamping. You can kind of see the stamp uh, creep out the top of that hairline just there, or the, the hat. I don't know what that is. <laughs> like I said, these characters popped up. I have no idea what they're really doing or what they are. Oh, did I use? I think I used the circle for the ear as well. I do believe I circle stamped over the ear with that hip joint. So then when I went to outline everything, I'll do it with the black so you can really see it. I just took liberties with what I kept and what I didn't. So I didn't follow the jaw down into the neck. I actually just took it down to the, um, down to this shoulder joint almost. Can you see that? How it kind of tapers in. So I'm, I'm really leaving out all of this. this. This could never have been stamped and it wouldn't have been a problem. But I think it's important to show because uh, even though I say stamp an illustration, it doesn't mean you have to go around every single outline. Like when you're drawing the body, you don't have to draw every single... You, I mean, you might as well stamp it in black if you were going to do it that way. The idea is that you are creating the base and you could use that in your illustration to know where to go. And whether you did it, you know, really, you know, nice and fluid, because that was your aesthetic, or if you just really liked it rigid, maybe you liked all of this angular work and you wanted to use that as your inspiration to, I don't know, to characterize your illustration. Um, the point was that you stamped out the blueprint. How you, you decided to finish it or um, render it was where I think most people's personal aesthetic really started to show through. Um, but even in this too, a lot of the actual puzzling together of all of this reveals a lot about uh, someone in their own personal aesthetic as well. I'm going to take this line up here. I probably shouldn't have gone into that ear. I'm going to go around the leaf and above. I'm just going to follow that headline. I'm going to do the same thing there. So now I've got two little ears. I'm going to put the little, just a little interior detail. Uh, when I go down here, these arms, I've just rounded all these edges. I don't really want to catch anything too sharp or angular. And since I've got this hip down here, I might just go around there so I can see where that paw is. It looks like a paw to me. I'm coming up. I want to just use all of this as my guide so I can see that the dips in and it dips back out. I know I want to end here because I've got my hip. I might as well use that point. I'm just going to round this up in a big rainbow shape just to attach to that arm. And see, this is... Um, you can think of this as part of the skeleton as well, uh, so that you're at least knowing where things go relative to each other. I think it kind of, even though this is a totally fictitious kind of a, um, you know, make-believe character, you can, still, you can still see that there's some anatomy going on with it. Like, arms still look like they're relative to where, you know, the neck might be and where the face might be. And yeah, even though it's not reading as a body per se, you can still see that those elements make it up because that framework that you're following, even though you're not drawing every single line, is still in the right place. 
relative to each other, which, you know, obviously, that's not a rule anyone needs to follow. And many characters have been very successful without having any kind of regular anatomy. Um, but also I find things like stamping really good for the fact that if I had drawn this out and this arm was this length, sometimes I would just put my pencil down to figure out like, oh, okay, so how long is that? It goes from the G to the M, so this has to go from the G to the M, so I need to make sure that it fits. You know, it does a lot of measuring and a lot of boring things I don't want to do, so <laughs> the stamp really helped me out with that. Uh, I'm going to go around this little paw and arm here, and the same thing we did here where I've got a little hip joint, and I've got an arm that needs to find a home, you know, near a body, so I'm just going to curve that around. And that's how I came up with this little body here. I really like it. I could put the banner on, but I think today I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to really make sure that that oval frames our character. And there he is. He, she, it, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't really know what it's supposed to be. Um, but you could finish it a bunch of different ways. If you have done it on craft, this is a great opportunity to grab your um, lighter colored pencils and really put them to good use since they never really work on white paper and they don't show up well. <laughs> I think craft paper is a great excuse to get those out and also to practice your um, your shading where you want to put your highlights and your shadows I always recommend people use toned paper for practicing that because it just eliminates the step of having to find a mid-tone even though this isn't technically you know a human character we can still say that it has skin and we can still practice adding the shading and the depth where we want it to go yeah I'm gonna just put a bit of quick color on here Actually, the shadows and the highlights don't really need to go anywhere special. I think the most fun of this for me was um, putting in all these little details. So I have... A lot of this was watercolour. Um, really flat watercolour. I let the skin be a little textured. Uh, but then all the, the washes I did over the top, I wanted to be really flat. Um, and then I grabbed my clean colour dot. I used the pink and the yellow on this one to match. I've got some blue on here, so I might use blue and I put all these little dot accents throughout the skin just to give it a bit of an interesting look. I did do this kind of hat detail up the top. It was just because there was a lot of yellow up there and I didn't think it needed to be that yellow. <laughs> there was no real rhyme or reason to it. Detail on there. I could get really carried away actually doing all the detailing and on a really simple character like this, it is quite fun because um, the detailing really counts to adding a lot of that interest if the shapes are super simple. I think one of the other key elements of this was um, all the colors that are in that eye. I think that was what made it really cute. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you have a great time uh, playing with this. This is not something that I think is gonna float everyone's boat, but as far as using your stamps to create something super interesting, um, you can see we didn't technically stamp this out, but we used our stamps to help us get to this point. And like I said, this might just be something that you stamp out as an idea, and then you grab another page and you're like, oh, okay, great. I'll, um, you know, if I wanted to grab this, and this was now going to be my, my concept. Uh, so when I went to go and draw my character, I knew it had this kind of a head. I could, I could start to round these ears off and uh, do some more fun things with it. Maybe I could change the proportions. Maybe I thought it was cute, but it could be cuter, or maybe it could be more scary. Maybe I just wanted to have a different pose, and I can't figure out the the proportions for that. Or I wanted to size it up. I could also photocopy it and, you know, make it larger. Or I could just use what I know about these shapes and make the whole thing bigger. I mean, you could have accidentally stamped yourself a new children's book character. I don't know. Whatever that means to you. It doesn't... I'm, like, so carried away right now, I can't even think about what I'm talking about. I'm really interested in how this is going to turn out. Um... I just don't want to harp on and pretend like this is a super important thing to do. Like I said, it's a creative exercise. Um, it, it's not really intended for you to make art to frame in your house. If you can, you can definitely make that work for yourself if if you're that way inclined. But for me, it's uh, it's all about the ideas. If I really sat down to do this, I mean, I did I managed to sit down and do this at one point. So I, I like that. But the body... You know, having this face is all great, but what if there's no body to go with it? What if all the bodies I, I tried to draw weren't interesting and, um, you know, they were proportioned weirdly in a way that I didn't like? At least if I stamped it out, I could get to that point quicker or find something, you know, more abstract to play with. I actually think um, he looks older in this. I'm going to say it's a he. It could be a she. 
whatever it is to you, it is that. <laughs> but in this illustration, I feel like this was the baby version and this is like the tween version. <laughs> Um, oh, I could even angle the eyebrows. I still might want to put in all my, my little dots. There you go. Now we've taken it into a, you know, an idea that we could play with again. Maybe I don't like these proportions. Maybe I would want to try it again. Maybe I thought, I, you know, I'm happy that I found that this is what they look like when they're older, but I don't want to know that. <laughs> Maybe I only want to know what they look like when they're babies or a younger version of this. I mean, I think what makes this so cute is that its head is so much bigger than its body and those eyes are so big on the face. So I could do an even rounder and bigger head with smaller ears. Huge eyes. If you've done my uh, whimsical illustration course, I think what I'm doing here would be really familiar <laughs> to you uh, from the proportions and placement exercise. Um, and this is why I think that is uh, super helpful sometimes, not even sometimes, pretty much all the time when you're creating something that uh, either needs a bit of continuity or you're exploring variations on a theme. You know, you, you can't really stray too far from where you started, but you need to know what's working for you and what's not. The ideas in that lesson are what I'm using right now. There you go, kind of a baby one. There you go. I think I'll leave it at that. I know I wasn't really planning to go that far with it, but um, you know, this is this is how quickly it can all spiral out of control in your creative play session. <laughs> you can be think you're doing one thing, and then three minutes later, you've got a whole idea for a children's storybook. So. Um, I want you to have fun with that, and I want you to not feel pressured to do that with stamps, but with anything that you can. Like I said, the stamps are a tool that I use to play like this, um, and they're not essential. You don't need this to do it. It helps if you want to be doing exactly what I'm doing here and follow along with me, um, but you can find other alternatives. There's no reason you couldn't cut out a face from a magazine and do this. There's no reason you couldn't find stencils and play with the shapes the same way. I just like the stamps because it's like playing with... Lego, you know, as quickly as you can build it up, you can also break it all apart and start again. It's like how I feel with stamps. You can stamp it out really quickly. If it doesn't work, toss it aside, stamp it out again, try something a little bit different. Um, so that's why I like that. And I also like that uh, if you're open to it, if you're open to just using the shapes as shapes, you can see that there's a ton of possibilities for drawing, you know, kind of outside the lines a little bit and using them as skeletons, as frameworks, as blueprints, whatever you want to call it, uh, to getting into that more abstract place. I think I showed this one as well, which was fun, but these uh, sleeves here is the hip joint. This little hip joint here, both of these sleeves, I stamped them out here just to show people that that's exactly what that shape is. And then I just connected them down to the arm to make those sleeves. Uh, not typically a sleeve shape I would ever really draw. I don't think I've ever really kind of seen it before. And technically, if you try to uh, make that 3D, I think it's one of those weird shapes that actually doesn't make sense in three dimension. <laughs> uh, like there'd be something really weird going on about this shape. Uh, but in drawing, it can exist. In illustration, it's allowed to be there and no one's going to question it. So, I mean, I questioned it, but, <laughs> but it's allowed to exist, right? You know, it, does, it doesn't have to make sense in 3D if what we're doing is 2D. And uh, so I like to live in that fantasy space. The reason she's got leaf brows is just because I liked these leaf brows. To me, they kind of, it was relating. <laughs> I thought it was, there was some continuity going on there. But I just wanted to show people and share with you here in this demo that the stamps are tools. They're um, a means to an end. And that end doesn't have to be, um, you know, a one and done stamp. It's not... I, don't, I really don't try to create many single-use stamps, although I will change that because <laughs> I think I do want to actually try creating a few um, and just, and not single-use as in toss it out, but uh, things that are much more specific. I've been so open and broad with how I've designed them so that I could play like this. You know, there was something there, but there wasn't enough of an imprint for you to get stuck in my vision for that stamp. Um, it was it would allow you to still play with it. Um, and that's what I really love about this these techniques and, and what I'll continue to do for this this kind of a product. But I do want to play with more 
um, collections and theming because there are also other just decorative pretty things that I like. That's where we're moving this year. I know we keep talking about what we're doing in 2020, but it's all changing at the drop of a hat. So I've got to keep you informed. I've got to keep you updated. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, let me know how you get on. Let me uh, let me see on social media if you do. Put it in a Facebook group or tag me on uh, Instagram. I am still scouting for um, just a couple more course ambassadors for the travel journal workshop. I have a bunch in mind. I've asked no one yet, so please don't freak out. <laughs> um, but I have a bunch of people in mind and uh, I should be getting around to finishing that really, really soon. But yeah, I got so much to do before then. So I'll, uh, I'll be with you really soon. Have a great day. Until next time, thanks for joining us at Creativation 2020. <laughs> Bye.